Hello! Uh, today we're going to learn how to calibrate the QTOF micro instrument using a solution of sodium iodide and methanol. Um, the first important part is to not directly use your syringe from the calibration solution as it contaminates it from whatever might be in there. It's also a good idea to rinse your syringe with whatever solvent you're going to use. In this case it's methanol because of the solution. That also prevents further contamination. About half a millimeter, milliliter is usually a good volume to calibrate with, so it doesn't run out while we're doing this. So once we've got this syringe pump going, it's usually good to go at about 20 microliters a minute as for rate. It helps promote some of the aggregation for the larger peaks, and it feeds it into the instrument. So. In here you can see the, cr the spectrum of the calibration solution in the aggregates of sodium iodide and presumably the most intense peaks are the easiest aggregation. So it's easier for smaller aggregates to form rather than the higher mass ones. So 172 is one of the smaller ones but they progressively kind of follow a decay curve as they start getting out into the higher mass regions. Um, when you look, observe the chromatogram, you kind of want to look for a relatively stable signal, which you're not seeing here, but it's good to collect data over, say, two to five minutes to have enough peaks uh, to provide sufficient signal-to-noise ratio and easily distinguish the calibration peaks from any random noise that may be present. So when choosing your voltages in the window, it's usually helpful to play around a little bit. Some solutions require a higher cone voltage of 40 volts. Currently I'm using 15 volts to increase some of the peaks around the 500 to 900 atomic mass unit range. Um, another parameter that's useful to play with is the desolvation gas and flow rates. Um, and then a final parameter to tweak would be the XY raster. Another parameter to adjust can be this XY tuning source uh, for the head, for the source, as it allows the cone to be moved in and out and closer or farther from where it's drawn into the instrument. And larger aggregates actually fly better when the source is slightly farther away, and then the smaller aggregates are more dominant when it's closer to the inlet. So the further knob over here, adjusting it, moves the cone in this direction, left or left or right, along along a uh, along the plane. Whereas this knob over here moves the source forwards or backwards along the same plane. And so tweaking these allows for good signal resolution of your ions as they fly through the machine. So as you can see we've been collecting data for about six minutes which will be great for ion resolution and some of these fluctuations in the total ion count are due to some of the fluctuate or some of the adjustments we've made on both our home screen as well as the XY source adjustments. Um, once you're ready, you can stop the acquisition. The next step would be to sum all of the data you want to use. So, once the chromatogram has been summed, we can see a good signal-to-noise ratio. The next step you want to do is process this crude calibration spectrum in order for the machine to use something more useful. The first step would be to hit process and then smooth. The ideal smooth window is 3 uh, using the mean distribution. So you can click OK. 
The computer then smooths out some of the data to provide a more uniform set. Allows a much more resolved peak to form. Mm -hmm. The next step will be again to click process and center using a minimum peak width of 5, using a centroid, and the areas all selected, and they usually stay in this form, so you don't need to worry too much about it. Clicking OK allows the computer to process the data again. And this will highlight some of the I idealized peaks that we should be looking for. The next step is to save your spectrum. And as you can see, I've titled it uh, calibration in the positive mode with the date. Um, remembering this number, 228 ACMAS, accurate mass, will help pick the correct file when we're choosing, when we're calibrating it. So I'm going to save that. Moving into our MS Tune window, the next step in the calibration is to click the calibration tab, calibrate instrument. We're going to come up with this window here. You want to make sure that we have the right file that we're calibrating against, otherwise you may be calibrating the positive mode with a negative reference, which is no good. So we are using sodium iodide 2. That is the file we want to calibrate against. So we are going to click on the calibrate tab, calibrate from file. We're going to make sure that our time of flight tube is clicked, and then we're going to find our spectrum. So I'm in a different user right now, but we are going to go to James Data, and I'm Calpause, here's the current date, so I know how to find it. Next, we want to go into History, and we want to find our 228 accurate mass file that we saved that has both the cent centered data and the smooth data. We're going to click OK, and OK, and OK, and this is going to bring up a new calibration window. Sometimes the computer automatically selects things, but this window here is the uh, calculated ideal mass uh, up to numerous decimal points and that is what we are calibrating as a reference and so if you zoom in we can see how closely some of our peaks align so my experimental calibration was 0.3 atomic mass units off for certain things and as you can see as we get into higher masses I begin to have a larger mass difference between the calculated value and the experimental observed value. So how do you select each of those peaks if you want to make sure that it selects the correct one? Mm -hmm. um, like meaning left click, right click, and stuff. Okay. So in some scenarios, not every peak will be lined up with an experimental peak. In that case, or if you want to double check that you are clicked on the, s the correct peak, you can right click on the calculated window and then right click the corresponding peak in your experimental window. As you can see that deselected a certain calibration peak or you can add different peaks in your calibration curve if you so desire. Uh, this could be useful for some of these higher mass peaks. As the ion count is intrinsically low and tough to um, automatically align up. So if I want to add a 1200 peak, I'm going to right click on the calculated window and right click on the corresponding experimental one. And then to zoom back out, I'm going to display default settings. So at the end of the day, you want to look out for your residuals as they should be within plus or minus 0.01 atomic mass units from zero. So as you can see, these, these are all relatively stable and create residuals and resolution to continue on with our calibration. The next step is to click on the Finish tab and accept calibration. 
because we are satisfied with it. And next you want to save that as, click on File, Save As, so we can use that as the reference for the next set of experiments for the instrument. It saves it in this AccuDB folder, um, but we don't really want to save it there. I want to be able to find it later, so I'm gonna, I have my own calibration folder in my thing. So I'm going to title it in consistent format so you can find it later. Again, calibration in positive mode with the date. So you're going to click save. And that's it. You're good. You are calibrated and ready to use the instrument with a high degree of accuracy.